my my whole first book of stories is set in California, okay. mostly Los Angeles, a few in the San Francisco area. Um, although I haven't lived in California for years, it is still very vivid to me. I loved it there. It was the most beautiful place, some of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Um, but what was confusing was that it was also a very frightening place in terms of earthquakes. So on one hand, beautiful beaches, um, uh, beautiful countryside, beautiful weather, but then at any moment the earth could start shaking and everything <laughs> would fall down. All the buildings were just literally falling down around you. And this is a story called San Francisco. Do you know what I think? I think it was the tremors. That's what must have done it. The way the floor rolled like bongo boards under our feet. Remember it was you and Daddy and me having lunch? I guess that's not an earthquake, you said. I guess you are shaking the table. That's when it must have happened. A watch on a dresser. A small thing like that, it must have been shaken right off onto the floor. And how would Mady know? Mady at the doctor's office? All those years on a psychiatrist's couch, and suddenly the couch is moving. Good God, she's on that couch when the big one hits. Mady didn't tell you, but you know what her doctor said when she sprang from the couch and said, my God, was that an earthquake? The doctor said this. Did it feel like an earthquake to you? I think we are agreed you have to look on the light side. So that's when I think it must have happened. Not that it matters to me. Mady is the one who wants to know. She thinks she has it coming, being the older daughter. Although, where was the older daughter when it happened? Which daughter was it that found you? When Mady started asking about your watch, I felt I had to say it. I said, is the body barely cold? Mady said the body is not the person, that the essence is the person, and that the essence leaves the body behind it, along with the body's possessions. For example, it's watch. Time flies, I said, like an arrow. Fruit flies, I said. Mady said, what? Fruit flies, I said again. Fruit flies like a banana. That's how easy it is to play a joke on Mady. Remember how easy? Now Mady thinks I took your watch. She thinks because I got there first. My first thought was to take it. Mady keeps asking, who took Mama's watch? She says, did you take Mama's watch? That was one of the first short, short stories that I wrote. I love the form. It's, uh, it relies on a kind of punchline, like a joke or like a parable. And um, you have to compress all your thoughts into the most succinct kind of line, thinking and form. Um, and it just had to do with, uh, I was thinking about well, what happens when somebody dies, what we, what we keep of theirs uh, in terms of spirit or actual possessions. And I was thinking about that subject when, in fact, there was a series of earthquakes, very severe ones in San Francisco. And I just sort of thought of uh, what it might be for two sisters to find their mother dead, one of them finding their mother dead, and then to not be able to talk so much about the fact of that loss, but to focus on a lesser loss. My strategy writing any story uh, is the same uh, as it is here in this short short, and that is to take on a large subject, the largest ideas and concerns, and find a very small personal way in so that uh, in this story, I take on death, you know, a huge, a huge subject. Um, but in this story, the way into that huge subject is through the watch that is left behind by a woman who has died, which her daughters are now fighting over. I was not a good student. I was not 
particularly good in English, I was not particularly good in composition, um, yet I'm a writer. And uh, this, I think, points to something relevant, uh, uh, which is that it's not a bad talent, uh, necessarily. Um, <clears throat> I think it has to do with will, with how badly you want to do a thing, and if you will do whatever is required to do it, if you will work harder than the next person, because you want it more. Um, that was my experience. You would not have picked me out of the lineup as the most likely uh, to succeed at writing at all, but, um, but I wanted to do it more than a lot of other people, and so I toughed it up. Uh, but it is important, I think, to know that it's, uh, no one ever told me when I was growing up in school, gee, you're really good at this, um, and quite the contrary. So um, it's nice to know that that actually didn't make any difference at all. Uh, I started writing relatively late. I, um, I was a journalism major uh, and pre-med student, and I didn't start writing until I was probably in my was mid to late 20s. And um, I wanted to be a veterinarian. I'd worked as a surgical assistant for a veterinarian for some time. And uh, the problem was I hit chemistry. And that was the end of that. So um, I wanted to write always. Uh, the journalism was not so compelling to me uh, because you had to stick to the facts. So um, I, uh, I started writing stories and I continued to write stories and uh, tried to write some poetry but couldn't. I uh, didn't try to write a novel, although some people seem to think that's what you had to do. Uh, to get published. Uh, I just love stories from the start and still do. The first time I ever wrote a story, I knew when I started what the last line would be. And this has never changed for me. I always know the first line, of course, and the last line at the start of it. And this doesn't mean I know what comes between those two. That's, that's the work of it. But I do always know where it is going. I seem to need to know it will end up here, you know, this, with this line. Mm -hmm. And it has never changed. That's never changed. Uh, it's just an odd thing. I don't think uh, anyone else should feel that he or she needs to work that way. Um, but it is the way I've had to work. And um, it's just a little mysterious thing that I don't even question. I, it, it just has to be. There's a couple of times I tried to write a story where I did not know at the start what the last line would be, just wandered all over the place and, and, and fell off the page and didn't work. So, um, but I know that, uh, I know there are many things that, that can open a story that can start a person working. Uh, for me, it's language. I think the way people write stories or a novel uh, comes in part from the way they experience their lives or a given day. I I see things in moments. I don't I don't see big stretches of time with cause and effect. I I see a moment when something shifts or something changes, and I think. Uh, Again, the good news is that everybody can do that. Everybody can do that. Anybody in a given day can single out, you know, half a dozen moments when something changed. Maybe a friend, a best friend says something and suddenly you think a little differently about that person, for example. It can be something that small. Um, but the cumulative effect of these moments can often lead, uh, yield to a story. So, um, it's just the way you, the way you experience your life. That uh, you know, some people take their time, and some people feel that 
there will be people wanting to listen to them as long as they can keep talking. <laughs> and I don't. Uh, this is where the journalism, studying journalism, comes into play because in newspaper reporting, you're taught that you have to start with the grabber to grab the reader's attention and you have to hold it and you're expecting them to stop reading the minute you give them a chance to stop. So there can be nothing extraneous. You have to stick to the facts, what happened, where, when, how, why, all of that. And, um, and, and that did carry over when I started to write fiction. So I don't assume that someone will listen to me uh, indefinitely. I feel I have to get their attention with a really sharp opening sentence and, and work to keep it. And so that's why I think my stories are as compressed, as short as they are. Uh, and if anything, I want to write shorter, even shorter, not, not longer. One of the things that interests me most in story writing is that even though you start maybe with things that really happen to you, uh, people that you know, um, if you're paying attention, there is the point where it stops being your story and becomes the story's story. It will veer off, and if you're paying attention and open to invention, that's when story really comes into being, I think. And um, um, you, we mythologize ourselves so that even when you try to tell a true story, you tell a friend uh, about a close call, you find yourself embellishing it because it could have been a closer call. And uh, uh, I think everybody's alert to that without even trying. So I do try to stay, I, try, I usually start with something that did happen with people I know. Uh, but almost without trying, it changes. They change and they become somebody else or anybody else. Um, I think I look for and require a lot less formal story than many other readers. I find the what happened part of the story often the least important to me. I am much more interested in and alert to how the person is saying it. Uh, and again, who is in the situation, what she's making of it, not the situation itself. Um, and I think that's how one competes, if you will, with other writers or, or with oneself. Um, not with coming up with a, a story, an idea, a situation that nobody's heard of because we've heard of most everything now and things happen we couldn't even make up if we tried in real life. So um, the way you can get a reader's attention and certainly get my attention is to deliver somebody with a really interesting mind. I'm much more interested in seeing how a person's mind works than what's happening in a given moment. Very big a difference there. I think whichever way anyone works is, is valid. Uh, for me, it has meant um, each sentence has to be as good as it can be, as good as I can make it before I can move on to the next sentence, which means um, an excruciating pace. Uh, pace isn't even a word. It, it, it's, I'm such a slow writer, uh, but so what? Um, I don't like to see a bad sentence on the page. Um, uh, you know, what if I left and was hit by a bus and, you know, that's what people saw, and they wouldn't know I was trying to make it better. You know, they would think that's a, that was the best I could do. So I, I don't know, it's just silly. <laughs> but um, um, I, I envy the people who can write a draft, you know, write a version straight through the end and then go fine tune and fix it. Um, uh, it's nice to see a big stack of pages for the time you put in, but I never had that experience. Um,
My earliest memory of reading fiction is uh, taking, I think, this secret garden into a fort that I had built in uh, my family's home in Denver. It was a basement fort next to a crawl space. I wouldn't go into crawl space because there were spiders in there, but I remember taking couch cushions off the couch and using sheets and building a fort. And, uh, and I could just stay there for hours and hours. I will read any story about somebody getting through a hard thing. Anybody who comes out the other side of a difficult experience, I want to know how that person did it. So um, I want to read, I, I, I'll read stories where the stakes are high, where it matters if things turn out right or not. Um, I read uh, people who are incredibly inventive with language, people who say things I've never heard before, um, people who have sentences with a <clears throat> kind of rhythm like music. Um, I like the sounds of a sentence, the acoustics of a sentence, not just what it's saying or the information in it. In fact, information for me is often the least important part of the story. <clears throat> what happened. I'm interested in who it happened to and what he or she is making of it. I think everybody needs help, needs clues as to how to manage uh, on a given day uh, in the face of current events, which can hardly be more threatening. So I don't mean this as a kind of self-help. Uh, it's nothing like that, not what I'm looking for. Um, but people want to know um, how you do it, how you do it. How do you get what you want? What do you want and how do you get it? Um, where are you most yourself? I think people are interested in knowing people very deeply, going deeper, uncovering harder truths than most people are willing to say. I think that's endlessly interesting and even crucial.